Thank you, Sarah. Welcome everyone. Welcome to Teams Nation and welcome to my session, Create Solutions for Microsoft Teams uh, using Microsoft Lists. Before uh, we jump into the details of the session, um, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is João Ferreira. I'm from Portugal and I'm an Office Development MVP and uh, I've been working with Microsoft Technologies for the past 10 years. Um, and throughout this time, I wrote uh, two books, one about Microsoft Teams and another one uh, about Microsoft Lists. And today I will show you how you can combine both uh, platforms to create solutions for uh, the enterprise world or for education that do not require um, developers and everyone can easily um, create them without the need of writing uh, a lot of uh, code uh, and things will continue to be functional uh, and super useful. So with this said, uh, just a brief introduction uh, on what Microsoft Lists is for those of you that are new to Microsoft Lists and are not uh, well aware of this new tool inside of Microsoft 365. So SharePoint Lists is an evolution of the SharePoint list. Microsoft Lists is an evolution of the SharePoint lists that exist uh, in SharePoint since forever. And now um, lists have a dedicated application with um, a central location for you to access to all lists spread across SharePoint and across your uh, OneDrive, uh, your personal SharePoint site where personal lists can also be stored. It's a flexible data storage uh, container, so you can store um, different types of data, uh, including files, and um, you have the flexibility to create your own schema. You can even connect two different lists, one to the other, uh, without um, the need to be uh, worried about the connections that typically need to happen in classical, um, in classic databases systems. So this is super flexible and allows you to create um, things that were typically made on spreadsheets or uh, managed on paper. So all of that combined um, is Microsoft Lists. And if you don't know how to access Microsoft Lists yet, there are um, a few different ways of doing that, uh, but the best one is to look for this icon in the list of applications in the Microsoft 365 um, apps uh, list, and this is the icon uh, of Microsoft list. So today's session uh, will be focused on a specific uh, scenario. I will not be showing a lot of um, PowerPoint slides and I will not be covering uh, a lot of the basic concepts. This will not be um, an introductory session. Uh, we don't have time to go through all the concepts. Instead, I will explain you uh, through uh, a scenario how um, things can be converted, in this case from paper, um, to Microsoft Teams. So, I want you to introduce you Gino, um, a college basketball coach. This story is fictional, even though Gino is uh, uh, one of the best college basketball coaches of all time. And Gino has uh, an idea of modernize the way he um, communicate with assistant coaches and the uh, players throughout the season. And since the college is already in Microsoft Teams and they already have a team in Teams, um, Gino saw this as an opportunity to solve a problem uh, and to create an online platform to manage the team. This will include to manage the team for uh, each season, uh, adding all the players, uh, their names, their positions, their heights, uh, and other details. Um, create a central location with uh, the game calendar, uh, so they can easily see what are the next games and the previous ones. Um, the same thing for game results, and most importantly, the game uh, statistics. And um, the solution uh, that Gino thought about uh, can be represented here um, by this um, database schema with three tables. Uh, each one will be a list in Microsoft List. So the first one 
is uh, the players list. Uh, second one, the games and all the, the third one, the statistics. Uh, I have this image here to, el to illustrate what the statistics mean. So Gino and the assistant coaches were creating uh, this uh, statistic paper uh, during uh, the games and then they were sharing it with players uh, and the idea is to create a dynamic thing inside of Microsoft Teams so players and the coaches can easily um, see who were the players that played in um, a specific game, how many uh, points they scored, how many steals, everything will be there in front of their eyes and you will be able to filter by game, by player, compare players uh, without the need of uh, using uh, paper. And that um, statistics uh, list has uh, components from both of these lists. So if you look here to this paper, uh, the statistics area is uh, this thing here uh, with all these small squares. Then there are the players and the information about the game uh, at the top and the final score. So all of this can be um, migrated to Microsoft Lists and Microsoft Teams using this structure. So let's um, jump into Microsoft Teams and let's see how uh, this solution can be implemented. Then this can be um, applied to other scenarios, to enterprise scenarios, um, but the basic concepts and foundations that I will show you today it are the important things for you to build solutions on top of Microsoft Teams using uh, Microsoft Lists. So I will quickly uh, bring up here Microsoft Lists. Um, if you never open Microsoft Lists, this is the PWA version of the Microsoft Lists. It's actually connected to my tenant, so there are a few lists here already. It's divided in three different sections, new list, favorites, and recent lists. Um, and for this demo specifically, I already have created the uh, list and they have data um, in them so I can explain you uh, what um, is what and how things are connected together. So let's start by uh, seeing the players uh, list. So each player uh, in this um, list is defined defined by the default title column that it's used to store the name of the player, a photo, the number that the player uses throughout the season, uh, its position and its height. Um, obviously, this could contain a lot more information like the phone number, like the email, uh, whatever other personal details um, we can throw them uh, here and uh, that is um, super easy and the only thing that needs to be done is click here in add column, select the type of data that you want to use to add a column and then fill out the the missing information for each one uh, of the players. There's uh, a GS column uh, here that's uh, an auxiliary column that I will uh, use later on, but it's not related with the data structure of um, the, the table itself, but we will see in a minute what is uh, used for. Then um, the same thing happened for the games and um, Again, it's defined by its title with the name of the two, two, the two teams, the result, uh, the date, the location, and if it was a win or um, a lost game. And like the other one, um, there are a couple uh, extra columns here. Um, these are calculated fields. They don't need to be, uh, or they cannot be uh, modified uh, using the list form. They are generated automatically when this information is filled. So when uh, a new game is added to the list, it is added with uh, a title, a date and the site. And then later on it's um, updated and it's added the final uh, result. And if it was a win uh, or a lost game and that uh, complexity of having to edit um, the game can be easily um, simplified by customizing the forms that Microsoft Lists has. So uh, if this uh, list um, 
needs to be modified twice. Um, one when the, the game is added and another um, time when the, the um, game ends. We might need to format the form and that's what is in here. So this form was formatted to um, in show two different sections um, and one is the, the new uh, game data and then there's the post game uh, area. So when you click in one of these um, forms, uh, one of these entries, you will see that this is already filled. If this was not filled yet, uh, you would be able to add the results and the calculated fields um, you are not able to modify them. So this is included uh, in the platform um, by default. It, it was something that in the past required extra um, tools from Microsoft. Uh, it's still possible to do that uh, with um, Power Apps, uh, but now with Microsoft lists, uh, the layout of the forms can be easily uh, customized with uh, JSON using this option here. Don't be afraid of the JSON. Uh, it's it's not that complicated in Microsoft and the documentation has a lot of um, examples from where you can grab uh, samples and then refine them. Uh, and there's also uh, a huge uh, repository on the PNP GitHub uh, with a lot of samples managed by the uh, community. So this is this this is the example that it's creating these three sections. So um, the first one, second, and then um, the the calculated uh, fields. Moving forward uh, to the third list. Um, we have here the statistics uh, with all the information and there are uh, two important types of information here that um, you should uh, be aware of. They are not um, displayed by default in Microsoft lists and um, those are the, the um, lookup uh, columns. So in here uh, I have the statistics uh, for each game. I have this list grouped by game and um, I have information that comes directly from the players list and here I have information that comes directly from the um, games list. This information uh, is the one that is stored in the um, player and game lists uh, and uh, the only thing that needs to be done when Filling this um, information is select the, the player and select the game and things like the number and the, the final result is added automatically to the list through the lookup um, lookup column. So this is the way Microsoft uh, lists enforce relationships between two different um, two different lists and this is the way that information that is spread across two different lists becomes together and available uh, in a central uh, location. So this uh, specific list has already, as I, as I mentioned, the uh, information grouped by game, but just to show you how this works, I will go here to this uh, game label um, column that comes from the, the, the um, games table and to group the information, I will select here the group by label. Just to show you how things um, look without being grouped, uh, this is um, how the statistics would look like if the group functionality did not exist here. So if you have a lot of data about different topics inside Microsoft lists, it might be better to group it by something meaningful so you see it's separated and you will be able to collapse and expand uh, different individual chunks of data um, with one click. So let me group this again by label. And let me um, show you how you can collapse and expand the information. There's another thing here that it's uh, important for this uh, context of the statistics uh, table. All these columns that are um, just numbers, they include uh, a sum of the values of each um, each column. So each game uh, has uh, 200 minutes uh, because there are five players playing uh, and uh, this is the number of minutes. So you can 
easily see if the information that is in the table is correct or not. And uh, most importantly, you will be able to um, get the number of um, total uh, steals uh, and um, three point shots and, and all of that. So the sum is one of the things that you can do, but uh, if you select one of the columns and go to the totals, you will be able to get all of uh, this information. It might not make sense in this specific scenario, but on other scenarios, um, you may take advantage of uh, the average or maximum or minimum values of a specific group. And once you group this and once you start um, creating totals in your list, um, if I go all the way uh, here to the bottom just to show you quickly how this is then represented there's a final line here um, after all the groups that has uh, the the values for the overall um, content that exists inside uh, of the list so this is the structure. Um, this is uh, some of the formatting that was added already to the lists, and this is what will allow um, Gino to bring this information back to Microsoft uh, Teams. Now, let's see how the team is structured in Microsoft Teams already. So, the team is already here uh, in the, um, it's this one here, women's basketball uh, team 21, 22. And there are quite a few channels already here. There's the general channel, uh, and then a few private channels for coaches and scouting and sponsors. So uh, players and coaches do not see the um, information that they not uh, they are not supposed to see. But um, in here uh, is where all the lists were created. So behind a SharePoint, um, behind a, a team in Microsoft Teams is a SharePoint site. Lists are created in SharePoint sites, um, even though there's Microsoft lists now. Um, so all the information is stored here, the team structure, the lists. And now the only thing that we have to do is to connect Microsoft lists and the lists we already have to the team's um, environment so everyone can get access to data. And that can be done um, in a few different ways. And I will show you uh, how, for example, we can add the players um, to the general uh, channel. Sorry, I went I'm with the coaches channel selected. This is a different story because Private channels have uh, a different um, site collection and the lists are in the main site collection of the team and we will go there in a minute. So I will start by adding the lists um, application in Microsoft Teams to uh, Teams, hit the save button and from here I'm able to create a new list uh, or add an existing list. Since the lists were previously created, I will select the um, existing list and uh, the first one that I will do is uh, players. And for players, uh, you will see that the information uh, that it's displayed here, it's exactly the same one that uh, we've seen in uh, the list speed of the way application. So there's the name, the photos, uh, but this might not be the best way of seeing all this information. So there are alternative ways of displaying this and Microsoft has the um, gallery view uh, that allows you to easily um, switch and change the way things look like and this is how we can give uh, more um, emphasis to the photos uh, to better understand what player um, is who and then we have the number the position and the height but if we want to add or remove ec extra columns that might exist or may not exist uh, in the list to these cards that can be done as well through the interface. So the, the only thing that needs to be done is then to format the card uh, to show more or less fields. Um, another thing that can be done here is the filtering. So let's see that I just want to see the forward uh, player so I can go to the filter section and select just the forwards, close this, and 
uh, as you can see, this um, information gets filtered and now uh, you can see that it's uh, shown here with this filter icon, meaning that you are not seeing the all the information and the filters um, here show that there's something that is applied um, to the list. Now, if I want to go back and see the entire information, I can as well um, remove the filter. As you can see, when I filtered, I lost the tiles view, um, but if I want to define it as the main view of, for the list, I can easily do it by selecting the gallery and then um, save the view uh, as the all items view, that is the one that it's defined as default for this specific one. We can also switch it uh, to other views, but now uh, I will be able to uh, refine and use the uh, refiners here, and I will not lose the tiles uh, view, and I can see clearly the pictures and the same information that was shown um, as a list. And if I want to see something in detail, the only thing I need to do is click in one of the items and I can access to the information, add comments to uh, the player um, item, and even mention other users. In this uh, particular scenario, Gino and the other assistant coaches will be able to mention the player directly if they need something um, for, from the player to get updated in this field, and the player will be notified that there was um, a mention in this list item. So this information, it's all um, connected to the Microsoft 365 ecosystem, so it will automatically generate notifications when uh, the users are uh, mentioned in fact here in a comment. Going back here um, to the um, lists, the, another thing that needs to exist here is the game calendar. If you remember, the uh, one of the requirements of Gino was the game calendar. Again, there's a, a, a way of easily showing calendars now in SharePoint and in Microsoft Lists, and now as well in Microsoft Teams um, that not makes use of the Teams calendar. So since Gino wants to keep track of the game, uh, the score and all of that, and all that information exists in a games list. Uh, what I will do here is select the games list. And the games list, as uh, we've seen before, includes a column that has the uh, date. And with Microsoft lists now, uh, you are able to create calendar uh, views. I already have one here created, but I will show you the process. And to create a calendar view, um, there's one mandatory um, thing that needs to exist in the list. You need to have at least one column uh, of the type uh, data. So. When you click to create a new view, select calendar. Um, I will hit here. I will provide here the name calendar, uh, make it a public so everyone can access to it. Um, and once you select the calendar, there's the start and end dates for the calendar. By default, uh, every single list um, includes the created date and modified dates uh, of the item uh, and those uh, columns are also available here in this view, but what we want, what we will use here now is the date, and this date is the same value for the um, start and end of the game, and that's what we will do here now. And I will hit the create button, and the information you see here uh, will be transformed into a calendar. Now to see the details of the games, uh, you just need to select the game and. It is shown in here, showing the, the game um, that um, the, the, the hour for the game and the name of the two teams. And then if uh, I want to see the details of the game, like uh, we've seen with the players, um, just by clicking in the, um, in the, the element, uh, we can easily see the uh, details. So uh, this is how we can, um, with a single list and making use of the views, uh, create the, the information um, that different views for the information that allow us to 
see the results um, and at the same time get the calendar uh, that allow us to easily see when are the next games and what were um, what were the uh, previous um, games. So the third and final uh, list that we've seen is the statistics and um, like we've seen in Microsoft list and just to show you that it works in a similar uh, way um, I will grab the Microsoft list here and add the stats and like we've seen in um, the PWA application the same information, the same grouping that exists already in the view is um, in here and I can easily um, do filtering like we saw in the um, in the um, players. But in here, um, one thing that you might need to do uh, and since this is a lookup column from another table, you might need to uh, if you want to use a lookup column. Uh, you might need to go here to the filter by uh, to be able to um, see it if it does not show up uh, immediately in here. But even regardless if it uh, shows or not immediately here in the filters, you are always able to go to the column uh, and select um, the filter by. If I want to filter by a specific player and to see how um, the player performed in um, the games uh, throughout the season. I can easily come here, select um, the uh, filter, um, and I did a mistake and clicked in the wrong place. All right, it's back to the grouping. And here I will select, for example, um, this one here. And um, when click apply, I can see just the uh, individual statistics for each one of the games the player uh, took part in. And if I want to add other players, I can uh, do it as well by selecting uh, other player. And this way I will be able to compare um, the information of, of both. And still um, I have the information uh, of um, the, num the, the sum of the number of points of the number of minutes uh, of both players um, combined or a single player throughout the season just by looking to this area over here. So um, this is the, the solution already uh, in place uh, inside of Microsoft Teams using uh, Microsoft lists and to reach this point um, until now, the only code that had to be written was the code for the um, games form to separate the uh, information that is used into different, uh, into separate um, times. So the new game and the post game. And this was the only uh, code that had to be written. Everything else uh, is easily uh, implemented and achieved through the interface, uh, the only thing that has to be done is create the, the list, select the place where the list needs to be saved, um, and um, then start adding the columns. Now I will uh, move to something that looks a bit nicer, but requires um, a bit more knowledge in terms of JSON formatting, a bit of HTML and CSS. So this looks awesome, it works, um, but now um, let's move this to a next level and let's create refiners for the games and for the statistics uh, with different layouts that will easily uh, show the important information while at the same time will act as um, a refiner. And to do that, uh, we will have to use um, SharePoint. And um, this is the SharePoint site behind the team. And in this, uh, and let me zoom here just a bit so you can see it. And this uh, SharePoint site, I already have this page uh, with uh, a picture of the team. Uh, and what I want to see here is uh, the statistics, and I want to be able to refine them by player. But I want to uh, get my refiners in a nicer way. Uh, I want to see the number of the player, I want to see the face, and I want to see the name. So, um, 
to do that and using SharePoint, uh, we can um, implement it using uh, a default uh, SharePoint web part called lists. And for this particular scenario, we will need to. So let me add one here and let me add another one here. The list web part goes directly to the site collection where the list uh, where it's added and gets uh, all the lists that exists um, in the site collection. And here we have just the three ones that we've been seeing throughout the demo. And uh, the stats is the one that will be used in this side. And in this side, I, I told you that I want to use the players. So I will select here uh, the players list. And um, since this will be mainly to uh, consume information, I don't need to get uh, the command bar in the CL option. So I will hit apply. And the same thing on this side, uh, I don't need uh, the uh, button to add or modify information. So I will get rid of that. And as you can see, now I have um, my um, statistics here and the list of my players here. But um, if I select this player, it doesn't do anything here uh, still. But this web part allows you to create a relationship between uh, both web parts uh, in the page. And uh, to do that, the only thing that needs to be done is enable the dynamic filtering. And this dynamic filtering um, maps information uh, from two different lists, uh, and they don't even need to be connected. In this particular scenario, they are. They are lookup columns from one list to the other, but the only thing that needs to happen, it's a match between the value of the two columns. So um, in here, I will select um, the player uh, column. So the player will be my filter. And um, the list that will be used to be the filter is the players. And as we've seen, the title column is what is being used to store the player name. So here I will have to select the title. And once I hit the apply button, and come here and select one of the players, the information automatically gets filtered on, on the um, left side. It's fully functional. Uh, it's just using what Microsoft provides out of the box, but this filtering is huge and might not be the best thing to use um, in a scenario like this. So before the session, I've built a custom list formatting using JSON specifically for filtering showing the photo, the number, and the name of the player. And that's what I'm about um, to apply here. So if I go here to the view and select the filters and hit the apply button, as you can see, I get uh, all my players the same information. I will quickly um, hit here the players, uh, the republish button, so you can see how it uh, looks like and how it works. So I can even maximize this to get rid of the menu. And now if I select the players, uh, the information gets filtered. So it's faster to um, and more intuitive to use than the filters that exist in the uh, list application in Microsoft Teams. But as you can see, it shows the um, filter icon as we've seen before, so you can easily see what is being filtered um, in the list. Uh, and this, uh, in this case, it's being done uh, using uh, this list here. All right, now that we have um, this uh, together, it's in SharePoint. So now we have three, three different applications, SharePoint Teams and um, Microsoft Lists. Um, but this can be all surfaced in Microsoft Teams. So I will um, go back to Teams and to add this to the team, the only thing I need to do is click on this uh, SharePoint application. And I will select the game stats uh, page, hit save, and automatically uh, it will add my page um, to the, the um, tab. And the same thing that I was doing in SharePoint can be done now inside of Microsoft Teams. And we have um, more information um, or a better way of seeing information 
to filter the content. So just to show you um, another example, and before quickly go through the code, uh, this can be also done with the game results. So if I, instead of this, select here the uh, games, um, I've selected here, um, I added here uh, a similar view for filters, um, and this is not required. I will hit apply and I can also uh, apply dynamic filtering, but instead here, instead of um, the player, I will filter by game uh, on table games and the column is title. All right, click apply. And now uh, the same thing happens. If I filter by a specific game, I get the information uh, just for that game um, in the main uh, lists. So, and I can easily uh, and um, at, the, at, at uh, the same time see uh, the game, the result, and also the filter, and then the same information is repeated here, and the statistics are available here. So, as I mentioned, to implement this, uh, it required uh, a bit of code. Um, it's nothing um, too complex. It's again JSON and um, CSS, but um, it's also um, possible to do that using uh, Microsoft lists uh, out of the box. There's no need for you to install any application to build this JSON. So uh, if I go here to the uh, view selector, uh, click the format current view. Not this one. First, I need to select the filters. Uh, and now I will click the format current view. There's this editor where you will find uh, the JSON that it's being used here. It's just 74 lines of code to transform the uh, information we had before into something like this. Again, uh, if you are not familiar with this, a, a great starting point would be uh, the PNP GitHub repo. Um, if you want to start uh, with list formatting, uh, uh, what I recommend you to do uh, is, and let me select here the uh, all items. What I recommend you to do is, um, start by using the uh, editor. So if I click in the format current view, uh, there are um, formattings that you can apply to the list using simple rules like the one that we have here. Uh, and at the moment that you start editing and configuring this, uh, you will be able to switch into the advanced mode and see the code that it's being generated behind the scenes. So if I go here to the design mode and if I select here a column, for example, uh, is equal to number three. Um, all right. And number three will be displayed in uh, green. All right. If I want to see what was the code, uh, behind the scenes that generated this, I will be able to switch to, to this advanced mode and learn from here. So it's a great way of getting started. But again, if you want to get started with formatting, the PNP um, GitHub repo for uh, view and column formatting is an awesome place for you to get um, started. We are almost on top uh, of the uh, 40 minutes time for the session, but there's another thing that I want to show you still that uh, can be achieved and implemented uh, using Microsoft lists. And to do that, I will quickly switch here to the players list um, and uh, I will open it in SharePoint so I can get the, um, I can get the link for the list. And one thing that I mentioned in the beginning is that there's a, an auxiliary column in the um, this list, and that column is used for coaches to define um, before the games who will be the players starting each game. And uh, I already have here uh, a view created, and this view, uh, it's a board view that easily allow uh, the coaches to move the players to different columns as they will start uh, playing or in the bench, or if they will not be used in the game, they will remain in the unassigned um, column. So to use this in Microsoft Teams, um, we will copy this link. This is not a public view. And uh, I also mentioned that 
the coaches um, have a private channel. Uh, the 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 list will not surface here on the private channel because private channels have its own site collection. And if I try to uh, add in an existing list, uh, it will not um, surface here, uh, but we can use uh, a SharePoint link for the players. Um, and uh, now using the uh, game start, uh, we will be able to uh, do this configuration uh, directly from Microsoft Teams and define the starting team. Uh, okay, we have five uh, to start. Let's add another five to the bench and uh, this will be the team for the next game. And the coaches will be able to easily see uh, the start team, uh, who will start in the bench and um, the players if they want to from the, um, the uh, general tab from the players list. They will also be able to access to this information um, by switching to the game start. Uh, view. All right, so this is um, everything that I have um, planned to show you here. Actually, there was another another uh, small thing that I want to show you uh, just before we finish, uh, and it's related with adding information to all these lists. Um, the forms are available in the list directly. Um, so if I go here to the uh, stats or to the games, for example, I have here a new um, button, a new item um, to see the form, but there's an alternative way of getting the form always available and always present um, in Microsoft Teams, and that is a workaround, is not included uh, in the in the list application by default, but if I go here to Microsoft Lists to the um, games uh, list, and if I click in the new button, this allows me to copy the link for this specific form. And what I will do now is uh, add in the coaches tab, a new tab here in the, in the coaches channel. And instead of uh, adding a list, I will add a website in, uh, instead. And I will um, type here new game URL. All right. And now every time I want to add a new game, uh, the only thing I have to do is click here uh, and then once I fill this area here, hit the save button and this game will be added automatically to the list uh, without the need of uh, clicking in the um, list and then clicking in the new button inside uh, of the list. It's a nice um, workaround. It might not make sense for all scenarios, but for some of them, um, it totally makes sense as um, the adding information to the list is the main thing that it's done and you can access to the form with just one click without the need to first open the list and then access um, to the form. So this is um, everything that I had um, to show uh, today. I don't know if there are questions um, in the chat. Um, we've we've had a want. few. Yeah. All right. Um, so if we just go back to the beginning, we're looking at um, simple ways to make sure the list's available to all employees. Obviously, you were creating your lists inside the team, inside the SharePoint site, so that means they're not lost. Exactly. So um, I didn't mention that, but uh, when you create a list, let me get back here, um, you select the place where you want to store it. Uh, so here in this save to, you have um, two different uh, options to, to save a list. One is my lists, and for some reason, it's not showing the list of sites, <laughs> uh, but trust me, uh, if this was working properly, there would be a list of sites here, uh, and um, those sites can be Teams in Microsoft Teams, or can be uh, SharePoint, simple SharePoint sites that are not connected to Teams. Yeah, and if you're starting in Teams, obviously you can create your list obviously, from there exactly. or, or from SharePoint. Yeah, exactly, exactly. exactly. Yeah. Um, 
So um, people are then asking if there's an easy way with Sway and other products as well. Unfortunately, I, I was looking at the roadmap and I couldn't find anything unless you know of anything different. I'm not I'm not aware. No. Um, so with the filtering, as you were demonstrating the filtering, people were looking for it to dynamically select the items they were searching for. Now, um, I believe if you if you select one of the suggestions, it ticks them, but otherwise you have to. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. it doesn't do the dynamic filtering like um, no, Excel. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Yet, uh, it might come. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Um, and then obviously with lists, it's quite, um, it's relatively straightforward to to use the templates, but if you've built up your own list or library, mm -hmm. people are asking if there's an easy way to copy that to a new one. Uh, there is, uh, and if you live in the ecosystem uh, when creating a new list, you can start by an existing list, uh, but this might be a problem if the list is in a site collection where not all the users have access to. Mm -hmm. The alternative would be, and this is still in, in um, preview, I, I believe this is was not uh, globally released uh, yet. This is uh, the uh, custom templates for, for the organization, and this allows you to have uh, a template. We, we could easily transform these three lists as templates. So next season when Gino starts a new team for the, 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 the new uh, basketball team, the three lists would be displayed in here. Um, they can be um, trimmed and displayed to specific groups. Uh, the downside of this is that to add the lists here currently, it's required PowerShell. There's no graphical user interface. Uh, on my blog, um, endsonlist.net, I have a PowerShell snippet, um, a PowerShell script that uh, does the save and adds the list uh, here, um, all in a single script. So if uh, someone wants to give it a try, first, if you don't see from your organization, it's because uh, the preview, it's not added to all the users in the tenant, and you need to uh, wait for this to be uh, globally released. If you see this, then you can use the PowerShell script and add your own um, lists in here. The main difference is that when you select one of the templates from Microsoft, you will be able to preview uh, the information here, uh, but when you select uh, a template from your organization, uh, this gets empty just with the, the, the columns at the top and there's no demo data um, in the template. But views, custom formatting, whatever you have defined in the list, all of that uh, will be uh, added here. So things like the filters uh, formatting that I did in SharePoint, uh, that I used in the SharePoint page, that will be added to the template automatically. And that's um, super cool. But uh, if, correct me if I'm wrong. Do we have that same functionality for libraries? I think it's only with lists. No, at the it's moment, not, isn't for it? now. It's just with lists. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then obviously um, the links that you mentioned, the repro for the mm -hmm. specific example, and obviously if you can drop the link yeah. to your blog in the chat as well, that would be. I will. I will. Much uh, appreciated. Uh, let me quickly. Uh, so this is the post that I was mentioning, and this is the script. Um, it has everything that you need to to get, including the colors, the uh, icons that lists uses by default. So you don't have to worry about writing any of that information. Uh, you just need to follow the instructions of the script, and you will end up with with is here and I also have a video explaining the process. So this is one of the things um, I'm posting now in the chat. The other one, it's here in the samples and solution. And let me search by lists. Um, and there's column uh, samples and view samples. So I will 
get the generic link for both. And when you click in column samples or view samples, for example, you will be redirected to um, the uh, GitHub. Another sample that I recently posted um, here is a to-do list using Microsoft lists. And just to show you how this works, uh, you select uh, one folder and inside of the folder you have the description uh, of everything needed to implement uh, these lists and uh, the code is here in this JSON uh, file. So super easy to get started. You you might need to you need to create the lists manually, but then applying this and start modifying things, um, it's super easy. And there's nothing that can go wrong with the list. If for some reason you break the JSON, you will not lose the, the access to the list or to the data. Uh, you can always delete the JSON and uh, you will see the default view from Microsoft list showing all the data you have there um, prior to formatting. Perfect, thank you. Um, there might be one or two other comments or questions in the chat if I could ask you to 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 follow up on those and then everybody um, if I you will. can have a look at the feedback links as well. Thank you very, very much. I really enjoyed that. That was great. Thank you very much. All right. Um, don't forget to rate the session and um, if you want to get in touch, uh, you can do it. Um, using my uh, email, joffred.net, through Twitter or through my blogs. Sarah, thank you so much for um, your wonderful moderation. Thank and you. thank you all um, for being here um, in the first session of the day. Wish you all a great event um, and let's see some other great sessions. Thank you all. Bye bye.